One.org has been rallying support to engage with Africa in establishing new ways to unlock opportunities for its citizens through agriculture. On the sidelines of the recently ended US-Africa summit, One.org also made a feature presentation of various African musicians who had been part of a campaign themed Do a Greek It Pays. We sat down with three of them. What brings you to the capital of the United States? Oh, one, the one campaign, one.org. What's the logic behind the whole purpose of you guys doing this? Well, it's, uh, I think, you know, to, to target the youth mainly, you know, I mean, uh, there's a lot of youth in, in, in Africa, you know, that don't know that agriculture is actually an industry that they could also look at. I believe that we, can, we are a part of change, and we can actually make that change happen. We can speak to the youth better than... Uh, any other musician or, or any other you know entertainer at this moment in time so we speak to our youth easier and i think with this song you know i mean connected to most of the youth you know i mean that's why we have managed to you know hit up to 2 million uh. we started something which has brought a lot of people together in terms of um, bringing awareness to agriculture and raising up agriculture in africa africa has always been about the land, agriculture. You have people like Julius Malema who have just sprung up and said economic freedom. And it's something that people are choosing not to see, but it's right there in your faces. And it's being addressed in that kind of way. Now they're represented in parliament. How then do you connect that? Because most of the land still belongs to the former you know, people from apartheid era and the blacks remain landless. Yeah. Um, I remember one of Julia's speeches where he was, you know, promising to, actually not even promising, encouraging South Africans to actually claim their land mm -hmm. because it is our land at the end of the day. You coming out of Zimbabwe, and yeah. Zimbabwe is one of those countries that have actually done what they call the Land Reform mm -hmm. Act where yes. they've been taking away the land yes, yes. and redistributing it to yes. the black community. Mm -hmm. How has this campaign helped you send a message to the leadership of that country? Yeah, look, um, like I said, I remember the first time when the one campaign, uh, you know, called me and they, you know, they told me that they picked me out. I was like, yeah. It's, uh, I feel like it's something that Zimbabwe has already been doing in terms of that the whole land, whatever, you know what I mean? Could be just not getting into the politics part of it, the, the whole distribution of land, but they've been trying to empower uh, just people in general, everybody just to get in farming, you know. Victoria Kimani addressed the stereotypical aspect of agriculture as a poor man business. I live in Kenya, but I mean, if you want to talk about California, it's a huge farming place. I mean, they've got everything from oranges to, and farming has fed a lot of people in California. And so there's millions and millions of dollars in farming, and people are doing it in California. And so it's just about raising awareness that we could do the same thing in Kenya. And um, as a pop artist, in Kenya, that lives in Kenya, a lot of people look up to me. So when I had the opportunity to join a campaign like this, it only makes sense because it's not a poor man's thing at all. In fact, it's the opposite. It pays a lot. So yeah, it's just about bringing awareness and um, ending stereotypes like that. When we get to own that land, then we can actually, you know, start speaking more about the Wana Greek, encouraging people to actually, you know, go deeper into farming and actually living and earning a lot of money from it. But, you know, our country, our land is not really ours yet. We don't have the land. We don't own it yet. There's going to be a time, I think, if we keep fighting. And I believe that um, in time, you know, we will educate our people on really claiming that land and owning it. Have there been any projects? out of your campaign in Zimbabwe, helping the youth get involved with farming? And if they have been, what are they and where are they? Look, uh, I think the, the first step was to, you know, just to raise the awareness, you know what I mean, to, to say to the, you know, because we got to talk to the government. I mean, the uh, African leaders are a bit like, you know, you got to do it. It's got to be re repetitive for, you know, for them to understand the whole movement. I think the song itself, you know what I mean, did... Uh, you know, spark, um, you know, this, uh, the, the whole idea to them. I think 
from now on was like when as we go but i think it's now up to every individual now as i mean representing your own country to now like just take it up with your with your government and i've been i've already started trying to you know speaking to some um, uh, ministers that i'm friends with uh, to see, you know, how best we can, you know, I mean, we can also just, um, you know, take uh, the, the one campaign, into, you know, to the next level in Zimbabwe you know, in terms of helping um, the youth of Zimbabwe you know, to get into farming, which is something they've been doing already, but just to, I think, urbanize the whole thing, you know, so just to make it all cool for the, you know, youth to understand. So I think it's, um, you know, when I get back there, I'm going to probably take, you know, the next step in it. You know, take it to the next level. A concert was held at the Caterpillar where the theme song Coconut Chocolate drew most of the musicians and singers on one stage. This song was originally recorded by 19 musicians and singers and sung in 11 different languages. Over 2 million signatures were received during a petition. This song, penned by Nigerian singer Dibanj, also attracted fellow Nigerian musician Femi Kuti and popular Congolese. Fali Pupa to name but a few.